Good day, YouTube. 1MJ here, and welcome back. All right, Tuesday afternoon here in Australia. Now the market is down just a little bit, 1.8%. Things are looking uh, a little bit worrying on the charts, but you know, maybe not too worrying, but we'll get to that shortly. But look, Bitcoin dominance has dropped, so the altcoins are starting to pump uh, quite crazy. The volume is up, and gas price is just hanging around sort of $2.30. But as we can see, it's a bit of a mixed bag. Some things are doing well and other things aren't. So it's kind of all over the place at the moment. But Bitcoin just holding on to that kind of $45,000 level. If we start to drop a little bit lower, it will be worrying because this could be a fake out, unfortunately. Maybe we've just faked out over the 200 day moving average and this is going to roll over. Who knows? Again, we'll have a look at the Bitcoin chart very shortly because really that's the one that kind of tells us all about the crypto space. But all right, get ready for this. Best performers in the last 24 hours. I had a little bit of a sneak peek. Boom, Audius, good Lord. Over 100% in the last 24 hours alone. It has absolutely charged up. Terra Luna doing extremely well. Solana doing well. Near Protocol, Kasama, Polkadot. I mean, look, there's a number of projects that are pumping extremely well at the moment. But Audius, I mean, absolutely just flying out the gate. And I would say this is probably why. So TikTok picked streaming service Audius to power New Sounds Library. So artists on Audius will be able to upload their original music as TikTok sounds. So I'd say this is probably why Audius is absolutely pumping. I got into Audius a while ago. Uh, it just continued to go down. I'm, at, I'm pretty sure I'm still at a loss. Uh, at Audius, I might not be, I might finally be in some profit, but I sold about half of it at a loss. I just kind of wrote it off and staked the other half, so at least I've still got a bag going. But, you know, as is always, I'm now kicking myself. Whenever I sell a crypto, you can guarantee not long after it, this is if I've sold it at a loss, that is, you can guarantee it goes on an absolute tear not too long after it. So <laughs> I've been in this game a while and I should know better, but even, you know, even... You know, people who've been here a while sometimes just don't hold on to things long enough. And, you know, it's a double-edged sword, though, because sometimes sometimes you can hold on to things for just way too long. Uh, and I do need to remind everyone I'm not offering you any financial advice. This is all just my personal opinion and a bit of, you know, uh, education slash entertainment. And I think the term uh, edutainment has been <laughs> used on uh, YouTube a couple of times. So yeah, none of what I offer is financial advice, but I did really like audio. It got a really good grade over on Token Metrics, uh, so I bought into it. But it just continued to go down, and I, I think I was down like nearly sort of 40, 50 percent from when I bought in. And I bought in less than the all time old all time highs as well. But it just continued to go down, uh, and yeah, now I'm looking at it, and I probably should have held. But anyway, look, some really good gains there, considering the market is down overall. So what about losses then? How are the losses going to look? All right, safe moon. That number never changes, but somehow it just continues to go down. Uh, FTX token down a little bit, but again, it pumped really hard. A lot of these coins are coins that, again, like XRP and that, they pumped really hard. So now they are having a little bit of a sell-off. I think if you had a look over the last seven days, though, most of them would probably be up. And maybe even over the last sort of month or so, most of them would be up. So it's a bit of yin and yang. You know, you can't just have it all straight up because the harder it goes up, the harder it's going to come down, particularly if it doesn't have any periods where it kind of settles and comes back. And hopefully that's what's happening. But now let's get onto the Bitcoin chart because it is a little bit worrying, not overly worrying. But what we can see here is we did wick below the 200 day moving average. So that was a little bit of a worry. Now, this also could be a fake out in regards to this downtrending line. We came over, tested it, used it as support, and now we rolled over. And again, it is possible that we just continue to go down. I don't really think that's what's gonna happen. I'm pretty sure it's gonna hold you know, this 200 day moving average, but it is definitely possible that it doesn't. And we may have to come down and retest this line one more time exactly where that will be whether it's going to be you know maybe tomorrow and it dips down to 43,000 it'll probably just be a wick or maybe it kind of goes down for the rest of the week 
and again comes down to kind of retest you know probably somewhere around about here I'd say somewhere around 44 ish thousand dollar mark so probably over the next sort of few days it could do that but it might not maybe it's just up and up uh, for the rest of the week because again what we can see is you know it goes up has a pullback goes up has a pullback goes up has a pullback and this is what's uh, part of a healthy market when you have big moves like this that's why you had such a big retracement and again it basically came back to almost use old support resistance lines and this is probably what this is doing now again coming and wicking down not quite but pretty close to some old resistance kind of levels and then become support now again didn't quite wick down there but maybe that happens uh, in the next day or two or maybe it is just simply coming down to test this upwards trending channel where we've been for a really long time because that's basically where it's sitting right now so we'll just have to wait and see but we do need to keep in mind that like I said really we need to break that kind of 52 ish thousand dollar mark so it's somewhere around about here if we break that mark and go through it and then come back and retest it then I think everyone's going to be happy to say that yep we are absolutely 100% in a bull market at the moment it's still possible that this could have just been a fake out and it rolls over and we start to come way 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 lower again I'm not saying that's what's going to happen it's just something that we need to consider and the volume is very low at the moment it is midweek you know things are kind of quietened off a little bit from this big massive move but yeah we just need to keep that in mind but really again for me unless Bitcoin kind of breaks the $42,000 level and not just a wick if it wicks way down then I don't care if we start getting regular closes below the $42,000 level that's when I will be a little bit concerned but until something like that happens and I'm not expecting it to happen uh, I think we will make our way back up but we just again we might have to come back down and sort of retest 44 ish short of thousand dollars 44 and a half thousand dollars before we can go back up only time will tell excuse me all right moving on just a couple of stories I wanted to have a look at so the US government is offering 10 million dollars in crypto for hackers who will help them track cyber criminals so there's a lot of cyber crime going on at the moment particularly around cryptocurrencies and things like that and so the US government is going to offer hackers 10 million dollars to I guess I don't want to say track their friends down but that's what it may well be and you know we'll have to wait and see what happens 10 million in crypto though as well I would say the US government is probably sitting on a lot of Bitcoin uh, they may be sitting a lot of on a lot of other coin coins as well that they have uh, you know gotten back off other hackers and things like that so very very interesting that the US government has decided that they're going to come out and pay people who may <laughs> be you know sort of cyber criminals to help them uh, track down other cyber criminals and will reward them in crypto be interesting to see how that all pans out you know it's kind of like uh, <laughs> you know <laughs> paying a criminal to do uh, good work for you yeah who knows I mean not all hackers are criminals there's legal hackers who you know test networks and all the rest of it but yeah we'll have to wait and see it does it just does seem like a bit of a double-edged sword when you read it but anyway moving on to a disappointing story so when it rains it pours so Alex Saunders is again under fire after virtual HQ into Central N fails to launch so in November 2020 Alex Saunders minted 100 NFTs compromising tokenized tickets he said would grant holders access to an exclusive Nuggets News community headquarters being developed in the crypto powered virtual metaverse Decentraland Saunders priced the NFTs at one Ethereum each and that was worth around $570 at that time now that's worth a whole lot more like we you know if you if you weren't up to date on what ether is worth it's about three thousand three hundred dollars thereabouts let's go back and just have a look at that uh, three thousand two hundred just a little bit less but he had quite a few people put in and so here Saunders published the project's launch date multiple times despite the virtual headquarters having been fully built so it was actually built by another group uh, polygon polygonal mind they actually built a him and they did it for under ten thousand dollars and he raised a whole lot he got fifty seven thousand dollars but now 
the project, they've just written it off. They've said like, like they've they received the money uh, and they have built uh, it fully for him. But you know, I guess he hasn't been heard of for a while. And this was after uh, Poly Mine, Poly Polygonal Mind uh, heard about the financial problems. They've just written the project off. So I don't know whether they've actually fully handed it over to Alex uh, at the moment or not. But yeah, look, it, again, it just gets worse and worse and worse, this whole space at the moment. I mean, Alex really was up there with one of the, the bigger names and he had some great picks uh, for his members over time. But yeah, now it just seems, yeah, just so bad. And I'm, I'm really disillusioned by it all because I really liked Alex. Like he was a shining light for Australian, you know, sort of crypto YouTubers and things like that. And so I, I loved his channel. I wasn't part of his... Uh, paid group it was just too expensive for me I think it was like a hundred bucks uh, I don't know if it was a week or a month or something whatever it was I just thought oh, that's a little bit steep and what's sad is that you know probably a lot of that money was then just yeah put through FDX if you believe you know what's being reported and it all sounds like it just yeah, is piling up and piling up and piling up so oh so disappointing yep you know it's Sad. He was kind of, and like, I don't want to say an idol because, you know, he wasn't someone I fully idolized, but I really did look up to him. I, I thought that's a channel that I would like to kind of emulate and, you know, I'd love to be as smart as him. I'm never going to be as smart as he, he was in some ways and, you know, not so smart in others. But again, he made some really good calls, built up a really good community, but then unfortunately it sounds like maybe he's got a yeah a gambling sort of habit uh, on you know leverage platforms that just cost him everything and that's really really disappointing but what can you do moving on the last story all right ethereum 2.0 staking tops 21 billion dollars with the um, with the merge of uh, ethereum to eth 2.0 uh not too far away they're, they're thinking sort of early 2022 but now the biggest address of Ethereum is the ETH 2.0 staking sort of network. That is where the most amount of Ethereum is currently held. So very, very interesting. I haven't done any yet. Oh, I keep meaning to. I'm not actually staking any Ethereum myself at the moment. Uh, I do want to, but I need to sort of have a look into how to do it. I know there's a, an Avado system that, excuse me, that kind of makes it a whole lot easier and you can run nodes. Oh, excuse me again through there uh, again i keep meaning to do it and you know there's a thousand things to do in a day and i still have a job and you know got a family and things like that so i just haven't got around to it but that's pretty uh slack on my behalf i think i will really need to pull my finger out uh, next time i get a few days off and actually look into it because i do want to do some ethereum uh, 2.0 staking uh, i definitely think ethereum is going to be something to be held long term but i am going to uh, have a little bit uh, to sell and take some profits as well because yeah as i've said before no one ever lost money taking profits and you know as good as bitcoin does and as good as ethereum does there's other things doing better than that and then you can get into another project that'll outperform ethereum and then eventually there'll be something else that comes along that outperforms that and that's kind of the the goal of trying to you know get into things uh and get to the point where the returns you know you're best off at least taking some profit if not your initial uh your initial amount that you put in taking it out and then you know looking for the next thing to do really well that is more a kind of trader's mentality but yeah that is kind of the goal and that's how you know you build up really good wealth but also you know some people say just stick with one thing and you'll build uh, really good wealth there so you need to work out for your own you know your own peace of mind what will work for you better you know do you have that kind of bigger risk tolerance where you can jump from sort of you know platform to platform trade to trade and things like that or are you more just to set it and forget it uh and you know just come back in 10 15 years time when <laughs> you know hopefully it's worth you know tens if not hundreds maybe even thousands of times worth more than what it was when you bought it because that is definitely a good method but the only problem is again if you have all your money sitting in Ethereum while it's making great returns, there's things that are way outperforming it. And so, you know, again, if you've got the nous and the smarts to do it, again, you can, you know, put 
you know, let's just say a thousand dollars. You put a thousand dollars into something, let it ride for a while until its gains start to kind of just level out. It's not that it's making more gains, but there's other things that are doing better. All right, take your initial capital out, go find the next big thing. And that is, it's easier said than done, but uh, it's also not that hard. If if cryptocurrency cycles play out and this you know four year cycle is about to happen where we go through another bear market then you know get some profits wait for the bottom of the bear market next time and then get back in and yeah see where it goes from there all right that's it for me not a very long one at the moment not a whole lot of news going on and again price is sort of all over the place but i am watching this bitcoin chart just waiting to see what is bitcoin gonna do uh it's still early uh, over there the market hasn't really kind of taken off yet so is this the pullback is this basically this before we have something like this we really do need some other kind of you know some sort of good news to come along to really start to push this market higher i just get the feeling like without some more big news i don't know how much higher the markets can go parabolically anyway i don't think there's anything happening that's going to push the market parabolic at the moment i think it is quite possible that we are you know kind of just chop and change around in this kind of vicinity maybe keep doing stuff like this and slowly making our way back up to sixty thousand. but i just can't see anything at the moment that at least looks news wise or you know rumor mill wise that looks like it's going to push Bitcoin again all the way up to 100,000. I think it's really going to take large amounts of money to start to do that. But in saying that, large amounts of money have already come. But the problem is it's all bought OTC. And OTC doesn't push the price higher. It's what happens uh, through the exchanges that pushes the price higher. So unfortunately, they buy OTC where they buy it a little bit cheaper and then they come back and sell it on the open market and then push it lower. And that is what was going on here in my belief. But they worked out that it was just costing them too much. They were spending too much Bitcoin and people were buying it up. The appetite was too strong that in the end, it was better for them to simply just hold and let it go. And I think that is what is happening at the moment. But whether we have enough steam to push us, you know, way up to that hundred, let alone even the two, three hundred thousand dollar mark. I don't think we're there quite yet, but you know, time will tell. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe, be kind to one another. Hopefully you're all on that game train and I'll see you next time.